Welcome to Bryce Canyon National Park. Bryce Canyon National Park has the largest concentration of hoodoos found anywhere on Earth. Hoodoos are these irregular columns of rock that you can see from so many of the viewpoints in this park. Bryce Canyon National Park is located in southwestern Utah, and it's about an hour and a half to two hours northeast of Zion National Park. We visited Bryce Canyon National Park for a single day trip in March of 2021 before the peak season starts in this park. In this video, we are gonna talk about the things that we did on our day trip to Bryce Canyon, and I'm gonna recommend a few other spots that were not open yet when we visited the park, but might be open when you visit the park. And as always, make sure you check the park's current conditions on their website. I will leave a link for the site below this video so you can check out what current conditions are like in the park and see what trails are currently open and closed. As we take a look at this map here, you can see that the western side of the park is a plateau and the eastern side of the park goes down into a bunch of little canyons that feed into a big valley. When we first arrived to the park, we immediately drove to Sunset Point. We parked there in a massive parking lot. We arrived around 8.30 a.m. before the peak season, so shuttles were not operating yet. After parking at Sunset Point, we use the restroom there. There are some running water fountains if you need to refill your water. And then we walked over to the viewpoint at Sunset Point and then turned left and started hiking the Rim Trail, which is a paved trail. If you are looking for a easy walk with some great views, the Rim Trail is definitely recommended. We hiked the Rim Trail from Sunset Point to Sunrise Point. And from Sunrise Point, we went down the hill and into the Queen's Garden Trail. This trail takes you down into the hoodoos. There are a bunch of little viewpoints where you can look up at hoodoos that people in the past have named after different things like E.T. and Thor's Hammer, that kind of stuff. And of course, the queen herself. <laughs> Once you make it into the queen's garden area, you'll see a little side trail that will lead you to see the hoodoo that looks like the queen. And there's a nice little plaque that you can read about it that talks about uh, how they came to name this hoodoo after the queen. We continued onward and finished up the trail going back up to Sunset Point via the Navajo Loop Trail. The Queen's Garden Navajo Loop Trail is about three miles round trip. This is definitely one of the most popular trails in the park, so I recommend you arrive early if you plan to do this hike. Another benefit of arriving early, especially on a sunny day, is the color of the hoodoos is beautiful in the morning. The Wall Street section of the Navajo Loop Trail was closed. I'm assuming it's due to ice. The trail looked really icy when you're getting back there near Sunset Point. So uh, we would definitely wanna do that if we returned to this park sometime soon. After doing this three mile loop hike, we headed back into our vehicle and we started heading south down the scenic road. We left the Bryce Amphitheater section, which is the more popular part of the park and continued heading south, stopping at the various viewpoints along the road. And for this, I think your best bet is to visit the park yourself, drive the road, and anytime you see a pullout spot, just pull over and get out and look at the viewpoint. Every viewpoint has a different view from a different perspective. You're seeing lots of hoodoos, but everything changes as you continue to drive down. Some of our favorite viewpoints while driving to the southern end of the park were the Natural Bridge. And Ponderosa Point. Hey! 
After driving about 18 miles south on the scenic road, you'll come to a large parking lot, which is a dead end for you to turn around. And at this point, you'll come to the Rainbow Point and Yovimpa Point overlooks. This area of the park is at a higher elevation. You're over 9,000 feet. It can be chilly any time of the year. It can also be very windy, so make sure you pack and dress accordingly. The Rainbow Point Overlook has a little walkway that's paved where you can just kind of walk along the rim and take in all of the beautiful sights and the colorful rocks and you can see forever. There are a few hiking trails in this area as well. When we visited Bryce Canyon, this section of the park still had a lot of snow, so we started to do the Bristlecone Loop Trail, but it was pretty chilly, it was getting really windy, and we couldn't quite follow the trail with all of the snow cover. So after a short while, we ended up turning around and heading back to the parking lot. In the late spring months after the snow has melted and the Bristlecone Loop Trail is no longer covered in snow, this is a nice little hike, it sounds like. It's only a one mile loop with only 200 feet of elevation change. Uh, and it gives you views of the vista going down into the canyons and then also a nice walk through the forest with some fir trees and some bristlecone pines. After walking around the viewpoints at Yovimpa Point and Rainbow Point, we drove back north and then we made it back into that Bryce Amphitheater area. We made a right turn and headed down to Bryce Point. From the parking lot at Bryce Point, there's a short paved path that will take you to an amazing overlook of the hoodoos with 360 degree views. We just looked at the viewpoint and headed back to our vehicle, but it looks like Bryce Point is the trailhead for a few hiking trails or a connecting section for some hiking trails, including the Under the Rim Trail. After Bryce Point, we headed back to our vehicle and drove to Inspiration Point, which in my opinion is the greatest view in the entire park. The layout of the hoodoos here is mind-blowing and it's beautiful. I just stood there watching the clouds pass over, changing the lighting conditions on these rocks for a few minutes, and it was walking around while I just stood there staring at the rocks. <laughs> After Inspiration Point, we wrapped up our day with some pizza from the lodge and then stopped in the visitor center to read about the different types of hoodoos around the world and check out some information about the wildlife in the park. After the visitor center, we called it a day and headed back to our campground which was in Zion National Park, actually. We just came up for the day from Zion and then drove back at the end of the day. Quickly, I wanna give a couple more recommendations for things to do that we missed out on on our one day trip to Bryce Canyon National Park. The Mossy Cave Trail looks like a wonderful little trail. It's 0.8 miles round trip. Looks like it's an out and back trail with only 200 feet elevation change and it features a waterfall. That is located on the northern section of the park Another trail that sounded like a lot of fun but wasn't open yet when we visited the park is the Fairyland Loop Trail. The Fairyland Loop Trail is an eight mile loop. It has 1700 feet elevation change, so this is rated as strenuous. This trail has some awesome views of the Bryce Amphitheater area and is a less crowded hike. It sounds like this trail isn't quite as 
popular as the Queen's Garden Trail. So that might be a nice one to try. Bryce Canyon also has horseback riding. You can ride horses on some of the hiking trails there. I will leave a link to more information about horseback riding in the park in the description below this video if that's something that you're interested in. Because we came earlier in the season to visit Bryce Canyon National Park, we beat a lot of the crowds, so that was great. However, a lot of the trails were still closed due to snow and ice, so we're gonna have to come back. If you're planning your own trip to Bryce Canyon National Park, I hope you found this video helpful. Even though we visited in the earlier part of the season, there still was a lot to do, and this park is incredible. It's so beautiful, it's unlike anything else I've ever seen, and it truly is a peaceful place to visit. If you only have a half day here and you need to pick just one thing to do, I would say do the scenic drive, get out at a couple of the viewpoints, definitely stop at Inspiration Point, and if you get the chance and you have enough time to hike down into the Hoodoos, that is an incredible experience. It just lets you see everything from a completely different angle. It really puts the size of these massive hoodoos into perspective. When you're looking at them from a viewpoint, they don't look so big, but when you're hiking down there in the hoodoos, they're pretty big and tall. <laughs> Makes you feel very tiny. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of our fun travel adventures together. Have a great day and happy travels. Bye-bye.